Today on Penguin Propaganda, we will upgrade this ThinkPad T430 with a new processor, heatsink, and keyboard. First, a little background. I bought this T430 for $80 on Craigslist. Now, the two SSDs added to the machine were around $100, and the additional parts totaled approximately another $170. So all told, we're looking at around $350 for this laptop. The keyboard has a broken track point and it's not backlit, so that will need replacing. The CPU is a dual core and I'll be tossing a quad core in it. Finally, we'll be replacing the heat sink because the stock one is very dirty and beat up and it's best to replace it with a particular model when upgrading the CPU anyways. All part numbers will be listed in the description. Now I cannot provide links as these were bought used on eBay. I guess one question people may have is why a T430? The answer is pretty straightforward. This machine is very modular, so it has a lot of advantages over newer machines in that regard. However, the trade-off is it is also very thick and heavy compared to modern laptops. Now, some folks refer to this era of think pads as thick pads or thunk pads. Some notes on upgrades possible for this machine. As I said before, the CPU, drives, and keyboard are all easily replaced, but so is the RAM, battery, and even the Wi-Fi card. In addition, the DVD drive can be replaced with a caddy that you can slap a hard drive in. This machine also has the ability to hot swap a special battery called a slice battery if you so desire, which means you can keep it running for exceptionally long periods of time if you're willing to lug around a pile of battery packs. Now keep in mind, I've already replaced the main spinning rust hard drive with an SSD, and I added the HD caddy in another video. However, the video for that had many quality issues, so I scrapped it. Yes, I failed you. Please let me know how much this disappoints you. Now for a quick unboxing of the parts. Now I'm not Dave Jones, so I'm using a regular utility knife here. First up is the heatsink replacement. This can be found online with a search for two different version numbers. 04W3270 or 0B41089. I found this one on eBay for $37. Next we have the processor. This is an Intel i7-3632QM. I paid $80 for this on eBay. Finally, there's the keyboard. This again can be found with two different model numbers. 0C01923 or 31E302. Now this one was $27 on eBay because I bought a refurbished one. New ones run around $50. Note, there are many ThinkPad enthusiasts who absolutely adore the older ThinkPad keyboards made before the island style keys. I am not one of them. Feel free to comment on this below. Now for the first step in disassembly, I'm going to remove the DVD drive. As I explained before, I've already replaced this with a hard drive caddy, which houses a 500 gigabyte SSD. Next up, I remove the screws from the RAM cover. Now this is necessary as this is where the two screws that hold the keyboard are located. Well, might as well remove the drive cover that also protects the USB ports. Keep in mind I've already replaced this drive. I used the old drive's pull-out plastic tab and glued that to the drive previously. After gluing it on, I wrapped it a couple times in electrical tape and then attached the rails with screws to hold it securely. It seems to work okay for getting the drive out without too much fuss. Taking out the keyboard screws is necessary. You'll see that I'm placing all the screws in a magnetic bowl. This helps me keep them in place and also lets me set their position for easy reassembly. At this point I have an epiphany and realize I should have probably pulled the battery before doing all this other disassembly. In my world, failure is always an option. I'm using this 0.75mm Dunlop guitar pick to pry up the tabs on the keyboard and kind of pop it forward and then up. I would not recommend a screwdriver for this as you'll probably scratch or break something. Be careful when lifting up the keyboard so you don't rip out the attached cable. As you can see, this is attached with a small but robust connector. Simply give the little plastic flap a gentle yank and it will release. After this, I flipped the laptop over and began removing all the screws from the back plate. I arranged these in another magnetic bowl for easy reassembly. Make sure to get the tiny screw that resides in the battery compartment. This is commonly missed. It can result in a broken top cover when you go to take that part off. I grabbed the guitar pick again and just used it to pry up the top cover. 
The tabs will feel pretty tight, but once you get the hang of it, it just kind of snaps off. Uh, nothing really dangerous here. You can just kind of pry on it. Again, use something plastic. Don't use any kind of screwdriver. Here I didn't get a good shot, but once you have the top cover loose, there's a wire similar to how the keyboard is attached underneath the touchpad. I found it easiest to sit the laptop on its edge to just get to the wire's connection. It has a little foam block on it. Just pull it up and it'll disconnect pretty easily. After getting the top off, a corner of the laptop fell off. Apparently this had been dropped in the past and the corner was only being held on by the top panel. Well, we'll fix this later. To get to the heat sink, we need to remove the left speaker. It's held on by a screw with a little rubber grommet around it and it inserts into a little slot. Just undo the screw and lift up while sliding forward to get it out. Be careful as the wires are pretty delicate. I made the mistake of leaving the rubber grommet around the screw hole. I'll have to push this back into the speaker's recess later. To get the heat sink out, it's just a matter of removing the four screws and the fifth screw holding down the video card pressure tab. Once the screws are out, make sure to disconnect the power cables for the heat sink. The wires are delicate, so I used a bent pick to gently ease up on the connector rather than pulling on them. Also, make sure to remove the wires from the top clip. In my case, the clip was broken, so they just hung free. The heatsink required a bit of wiggling, and it was pretty tight. Just wiggle it and pull it slowly, and it'll come out just fine. I decided to remove the thermal paste here using some Arctic Clean Thermal Paste Remover. This old paste was rather sticky, so I used some blue shop paper towels to get the job done rather than cotton swabs. The processor upgrade went rather smoothly, but a couple things surprised me here. Uh, the retention device is a tiny screw, and it requires a bit more force than I expected. I used a screwdriver tip from an adjustable set and hand turned it to make sure I didn't overpressure it. I always recommend using finger force and then slowly working up the pressure. Don't just grab a big screwdriver. After seating the new processor, I removed the thermal paste from the new heat sink. Now I'm not going to lap this thing, just get it cleaned off and then apply some arctic silver that I have laying around. This tube is a couple years old, but from what I read online, that should still be okay. Once the paste is applied, I just slid the heat sink in. Well, not exactly. It was a very tight fit and I was cautious with pushing it in. The key is making sure there are no wires in the way and just kind of jamming it into the back. Once you get it pushed in, it slips right into the recesses. Tightening down the heatsink screws was again done with just the screwdriver tip. I crisscross tightened these to keep the pressure even. I don't have a torque screwdriver set, so I guess I am living dangerously here. After the heatsink screws were pretty good, I plugged in the fan cables and then reinstalled the video card pressure pad. Once that was complete, I finished up with a heavier tighten on all the CPU screws just to make sure they were good and snug. At this point, I realized my mistake with the grommet and had to fiddle around with reinserting this into the speaker mount. Once that was done, just slide the speaker into its recess, slide the grommet over its mate, and screw it down. Make sure to tuck the wire that's at the bottom back down into its little recess. Putting the top cover back on is a matter of sliding it back into place, reconnecting the touchpad connector, and snapping the edges down with a bit of pressure. One tip is to check your lid release mechanism before doing this. I had managed to slightly get this out of whack when disassembling. I had to make some minor adjustments to the lever mechanism before the lid would lock properly. Since I had the problem with the broken corner, I decided to fix it with some good old cyanoacrylate. A few dabs of the magical fluid and a bit of drying time later and the corner was reattached. After this, I finished the snap down process, went on to the next step. Before installing the new keyboard, I decided to screw down the outer shell. Since I had every screw in its proper place thanks to the magnetic bowl, I was just able to reassemble in reverse order pretty quickly. After that was done, it was a simple matter of installing the new keyboard. Just slide it top end first, gently plug in the connector, and then press down to snap it in place. Once it's popped in, flip over the laptop and reinstall the two long keyboard screws that reside in the RAM compartment. Now for the moment of truth. And she boots up. The BIOS has a full hardware test option, so I went ahead and ran all those tests. Everything came out okay, and the upgrade's complete. 
In conclusion, for around $350, we now have a quad-core i7 laptop with 8 gigs of RAM, upgradable to 16 if I wish, and 1 terabyte of storage. Not a bad deal in my opinion. Until next time!